Hello, I'm Danny Webster from Dyn Microsystems and we're doing a series of talks to introduce the Lime SDR and this first talk is about uh, the digital radio. So first of all we're going to look at what is communications and then we're going to look at what are radio waves and then we're going to look at uh, what is digital radio and then finally look at what's software defined radio. So communication is a message that contains information that's sent either by a person or a machine at a particular moment in time, uh, which is to be received by other people or machines and usually requires some sort of response from the receiver. There is a number of other considerations such was the message accurate, was it sent by an authentic sender, was it received by the intended receiver was the message correctly understood by the intended receiver and was privacy and secrecy violated when the message was sent. There's a number of forms of ancient communication, the most obvious being birdsong, others including fire, smoke, drums, pigeons, ponies, flags and semaphores and lamps and uh, post and telegraphy. Each um, communication method has a symbol alphabet. So, for example, the simple case, uh, fire meant invaders. Uh, the response from the receiver was to run away very fast. And uh, the case of no fire was to carry on life as normal. Before 2005, uh, pigeons could not carry an entire encyclopedia. So the message had to be broken up into tiny fragments or packets. Of course, the world has changed. We now have microSD, and you can put the entire Wikipedia uh, on a microSD card and send it by pigeon. Uh, it takes time and uh, distance for a message to uh, be transferred. Um, for things such as uh, ponies and uh, pigeons, that uh, takes physical time to uh, occur, whereas with wireless and optical communications, the process is near instant. So what are radio waves? Uh, radio waves are electromagnetic waves in the same family as infrared, visible light, ultraviolet light and x-rays. Radio waves have energy, speed and wavelength. They behave very similar to light. They can be reflected, absorbed, uh, refracted and diffracted and even produce mirages. Wavelength is often interpreted as frequency uh, in cycles per second or hertz. And the radio spectrum covers a range of frequencies, some of which we can detect uh, using our Lyme SDR and some outside the range. So for example, uh, the SDR is primarily designed for VHF, UHF and SHF. We have uh, some capability in the HF range. Whereas the radio spectrum extends from extremely low frequency used for submarines right up to terahertz uh, used for experimental systems. So why should we use radio waves for communications? They're extremely versatile, they're low cost, and they're ideal for short, medium and long range distance for both uh, recorded and real time communications. Uh, they can transmit sound and pictures and information and ideas and they're suitable for broadcasting. Uh, they're suitable for personal communications and can be used on land, sea, air and even space. So what is a radio? A radio is a device that can generate or receive radio waves or even do both. We normally call a transmitter a device that generates radio waves and a receiver, a device that receives radio waves. A device that does both we call a transceiver. Now, the way that we talked about radio has changed substantially over time. So it started off with uh, wireless telegraphy, sending messages, and then came along the BBC with uh, broadcasting entertainment, uh, remote sensing for space uh, exploration, personal communications with our mobile phones, navigation with sat-navs, and we even talk about microwaves being used for cooking, uh, as well as data communication. So the early uh, wireless technology was developed by Marconi, and he was using a spark gap 
uh, transmitter with a monopole antenna with a cohere detector. Uh, later radios used valves and point contact diodes and these were gradually replaced by transistors and then microchips. The LIME SDR represents an uh, end product of a long chain of technology advances and the LIME SDR uses advanced uh, microchips to uh, implement this small uh, radio module. So what is digital radio? First of all, let's talk about analog radio. Uh, analog communication uses a simplified, sorry, a directly amplified version of the electrical signals from a sensor, such as a microphone or a TV camera. And it can use amplitude modulation, frequency modulation, or even phase modulations. In digital communications, the information is encoded into a sequence of pulses which uh, represent ones and zeros of a uh, binary message. And these can be co uh, coded by either amplitude shift keying, uh, frequency shift keying, or phase shift uh, keying. Radio signals can be detected by both incoherent detection and coherent detection. Incoherent detection uses either the amplitude or the frequency of the signal, whereas coherent detection uses phase information about the signal. So, for example, early AM signals were demodulated with crystal sets, which is an example of an incoherent receiver. Uh, FM modulation is usually uh, decoded with a frequency discriminator, uh, which is an incoherent uh, detector but it can also be uh, detected with a phase lock loop uh, using coherent techniques. Uh, phase modulation can only be detected with a coherent receiver and the local oscillator must be very stable. Uh, the good news is that the LIME SDR works with all of these radio signals. Uh, there's various advantages and disadvantages in the uh, signals. Amplitude modulation is perhaps a little bit more vulnerable to noise and interference. Uh, frequency modulation is possible to do a very simple spread spectrum type system to get better uh, signal to noise ratio. And uh, phase modulation is very robust to uh, noise and nonlinear non effects in the system. As a development from uh, these simple modulations came quaternary amplitude modulation and is best thought of as a combination of amplitude and phase modulation. It's widely used in modern digital radios and it uh, includes a uh, symbol set which can be greater than two. So for example, 64 cram, you see there's 64 possible symbols uh, transmitted within a, sim uh, a single uh, uh, symbol. So this increase in information content is at the expense of a, a higher signal-to-noise requirement for the uh, same bandwidth. Our LIME SDR can, of course, work with CRAM signals. Digital modulation uh, is basically a, a signal level that changes with time, and from a very simplistic point of view, it looks like a sequence of square waves. And if you carry out a Fourier transform on a square wave sequence, you'll find that it produces a, a lot of harmonics. If we try to reduce the uh, um, number of harmonics involved, we end up with a more gently uh, curving waveform shape, which then leads to much less spectral interference to other users. So what is a software-defined radio? Conceptually, it's the ability to make a radio that can do something entirely new which it did not do in the factory it was made. So, for example, using the Realtek uh, DVB uh, dongle receiver for SatNav is an example of a uh, software-defined uh, radio where it's been changed from the original use. From an engineering uh, point of view, uh, Software-defined radio is a radio whose behavior can be dynamically redefined by software or firmware changes. So typically it would have microprocessors and field programmable gate arrays inside instead of hardwired parts. A customer definition would be quite different. So 
Can I watch a television program live uh, using my SDR? Can I watch a YouTube video of my cat on an SDR? Can I use it as a sat-nav device on the motorway? So we see some of the scenarios that occur, that we have this multitude of boxes that cover every possible radio standard, from cable television, satellite television, terrestrial television, digital audio, to Wi-Fi and AM and FM, as well as our more modern mobile devices, uh, 4G tablets and 3G tablets and so on. So in the perfect world, we would like to replace all of these by a single SDR box, uh, which would then become our home uh, uh, radio system. So why do I need a software-defined radio? Well, back in the 1940s, radio was very simple. You had AM and you had frequency shift keying. Then in the 1950s, uh, things were changed, FM appeared. And then gradually we had the first military GPS appearing in about the 19, late 1970s. However, since 1991, there's been an explosion in radio standards, uh, including various entertainment-based uh, uh, radio systems, uh, mobile radio systems, and data radio systems, as well as uh, satellite systems. So the question then becomes is how do we make a low-cost software-defined radio? And there's many different ways which we can split the software-defined radio, but this is uh, the approach that we've gone for at Lime. So the idea is we have a low-cost uh, manufacturable module which contains a radio receiver IC and uh, a field programmable uh, gate array and uh, a USB controller and it connected for a USB link. The uh, customer would then develop any RF parts that are needed to make his radio system comply with whatever standards are out there. And then he would use a general purpose computer to carry out the uh, data um, transformations required for uh, generation and reception of the signal. And this would typically be a multi-core um, multi-gigahertz microprocessor with lots of memory, running open source software and apps with a Wi-Fi or an ADSL back, uh, backhaul system. And we would use either USB or PCIe uh, interconnectivity. So that ends the first talk.